Hello everybody. Once again, I am Scott Stanton, the Tombstone Tourist, and we're in the beautiful town of Milton, just south of Boston. Now, Milton is gorgeous, it's tree-lined, and most importantly, it's one of the wealthiest suburbs outside of Boston. And who do we have today? Well, follow me this way. We have one of the wealthiest of their former residents. In fact, in 1965, he had more sales in his restaurants and his uh, hotels than McDonald's, Burger King, and KFC combined. Who am I talking about? Oh my gosh, Howard Johnson. That's right, Howard Johnson is named for Howard Johnson. And we've got his grave right over here. Now, Howard Johnson, at the young age of 12, didn't even finish elementary school. He went to work for his dad's cigar stores. After working there, and it was a failing business, he went to war, World War I, when he came back. His dad passed away. He closed the, down the cigar store and was saddled with over $10,000 in debt. He had to do something, so he scraped together another two grand. This is in the early 1920s. That's a lot of money. He paid off the debt, and he opened up a soda shop. The soda shop was doing really well, but he thought it could do better. So he spent another $300 and purchased an ice cream recipe that basically just doubled the butter fat, but he also added in fresh ingredients. Now, what he had done is he transformed the soda shop. He had 28 flavors, and that's what he was known for up and down the, the eastern seaboard, and he was opening up uh, um, his little ice cream stands uh, up and down uh, Revere, uh, Saugus, all the way up and down. Now, within four years, he was making a quarter million dollars. So after that, he opened up a restaurant. He opened it in Quincy. Now, strange thing happened. In 1929, the then mayor of Boston banned Eugene O'Neill's play from being performed in Boston. So where did they move it? Quincy. And where was the theater? Right next to Howard Johnson's. Funny thing, this play was over five hours long with an hour long intermission. So where did they go? They went to Howard Johnson's restaurant. Word got out and he expanded like crazy. Within about 10 years, he, was, uh, he had 40 restaurants and he was starting to build them on the roadsides uh, and the highways and started expanding out. Now, funny thing is, is if you're not from around here, um, clams is not a big deal. Fried clams is a staple here, along with lobster. And he was really big in the fried clams. That didn't translate. So he had to invent what was known as clam strips and sell them that way. So that was another innovation that he did. Also, he sold the first franchise um, in Howard Johnson's around 1932. Now, was that a big deal? Yes, because nobody had ever done franchising like him. He was very uh, rigorous on his recipes, on the cleanliness, the architecture, all of that stuff. So some people say he was the first franchisee, not quite right, but he's the first one to do it right. And that exploded. When he retired in 1968, he had over $80 million in sales. Now, who did he put in charge? His son, freshly minted from Harvard uh, law, uh, Business School, his son, Howard Jr. took over, and in the next four years, he built it to over a thousand restaurants and 500 uh, roadside um, hotels. By 1965, he was doing $400 million in business. Now, so we went from one soda shop to over a thousand restaurants and over 500 hotels. What happened? Well, the oil embargo happened. People stopped traveling less. They stopped traveling along the roadsides where all the restaurants were and all that stuff. And so in the end, um, and then Howard, the Howard Sr., was notorious for showing up to all the restaurants every day, checking out a different restaurant, talking with the franchisees. He was quality control. That's all he did his whole life. Like he said in a quote, I don't sail, I don't golf, I don't play tennis. I eat food and go to my restaurants. That's what he did his whole life. Four years after putting his son in charge, he passed away of a heart attack and he's buried here. As you can see, we're at the intersection of Balsam and Maple, right in the center of the cemetery. Beautiful, well, easily walked cemetery. Now, so let's get back to what happened. 
after that happened, the oil embargo, How, um, Howard Jr. or Howard Jr. stopped expanding, he stopped putting money into it. Things started to fall apart. Uh, franchisees gave up their franchise. Restaurants were closing left and right, and the whole thing kind of went to heck in a handbasket. In comes Imperial, an investment firm from the UK. They bought out Howard for about $675 million. The family and all the relatives got about $75 million of that, so they didn't do too bad. But then what happened? The whole thing went to hell. Within about 20 years, there were only five restaurants left. <laughs> now, Marriott ended up taking it over they split it all apart, and now Wyndham has the hotel. So you'll see a few Howard Johnsons, but it had nothing to do with the original Howard Johnsons. So, where do you go for a Howard Johnsons? There's exactly one restaurant left. It's in Lake George, New York, and it's ranked 131st out of 132 restaurants. In other words, it's awful. In addition to that, it's dark, it closes at four, and it doesn't have a liquor license. You think it's in trouble now? Just recently, the owner was charged with 15 counts of sexual harassment. So if you want a horrible meal in a dark, dingy room with the side of sexual assault, so you can go to Lake George, New York at a Howard Johnson's and enjoy your time. But you better hurry because I think that very last Howard Johnson's is going to go away. And what's that sound? That's the sound here of Howard Johnson rolling over in his grave. So come with me, take a look at the top. That's his fourth wife. And I'm Scott Stanton, better known as the Tombstone Tourist at Milton Cemetery at the corner of Maple and Balsam. And have yourself a great day. Thank you very much.